Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers offense struggled once again today during training camp day 14, and I'm here to tell you all about it. Welcome to Move the Chains with JJ. If you don't already, make sure to follow us on Instagram at for Panthers fans only, Twitter at FPFO underscore podcast, as well as TikTok and other DSPs at for Panthers fans only. Thank you all for being here. Day 14 was was another one of those ones, man. And transparently, the days are beginning to stack for the defense. Obviously, we'll go into more context and give more information throughout the video. Take the time out right now to like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell notification on. Shout out to everybody that I've seen at camp so far. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given me. Saw a couple of you guys today gave away a VIP ticket yesterday. So that was a dope opportunity. So again, like, comment, subscribe, help us with that algorithm. And again, thanks so much for being here. We'll jump right into the video just because I don't want to take too much time. Tomorrow really is the day that we've all been waiting for. And we're going to kind of hone in on that. But I will make sure to give you guys some information, details on what did occur today, as well as some things to look forward to for training camp joint practice tomorrow with the New York Jets. Now, we're going to get right into it because I'm sure that you guys have seen the Carolina Panthers are still struggling with injuries. This is something that we've talked about. We've discussed the Carolina Panthers throughout the first day or two of camp seem to be very, very healthy. And ever since then, it has turned for the worst. Quick update today, if you don't know, Dane Jackson exited practice probably about an hour and 15 minutes into camp. We talked about Dane Jackson the other day, and I told you guys I wasn't even sure if he was on the field. Come to find out, he did do a little bit of individual work on that particular day. Today was a little similar. However, he is dealing with a hamstring injury, and he did exit practice today via the cart. Lamar Jackson was the cornerback taking reps with the first team yet again after we saw the huge performance from him on Thursday against the New England Patriots. Then I told you guys on Monday, it was a similar situation with him taking reps with the ones. And then again today, same situation. J.C. Horn on one side and Lamar Jackson on the other. Off of that, the Carolina Panthers did bring in a couple of defensive backs today for a workout. One of those guys was Rudy Ford, not 100% on who the other guy is, but we'll definitely touch on that as time goes on, because I'm sure we'll get more reports and things of that nature. So tune in tomorrow, we'll discuss that a little bit more in detail. More injury news, Shaq Thompson was a go today, so that is a positive. I talked to you guys over the past week or so about Shaq Thompson being out at camp, looking over individual reps, things of that nature. Monday, he was out there during individuals, taking a couple of mental reps, etc. We saw him working a little bit during the walkthrough. And then today, he seemed to be a full go, though they did not have pads on today. They just had uppers on, just had the shells on. But he was a full go. He participated in all team drills. He seemed to participate in all individuals. So it seems like Shaq Thompson is back. Another couple of guys to note as well that returned from injury today. Tommy Trimble and Xavier Leggett both did practice today. We saw Xavier Lee get catch about a 13, 14, 15 yard pass from Bryce Young across the middle. And then we saw Tommy Trimble getting some good work in during team as well as individual. So that is the positive. Now, other big injury news for the Carolina Panthers. I tweeted out that Deontay Johnson was not at practice today and we weren't sure where he was. However, after practice during Dave Canales' press conference, he did confirm to the media that Deontay Johnson has a mild groin strain and he is officially being listed as day-to-day. -day. Tough, tough, tough blow for the Carolina Panthers in this offensive unit that has already been struggling over the past week to week and a half of camp. I do not believe that we will see Deontay Johnson during joint practice tomorrow. So that's extremely unfortunate from the fan standpoint, as well as just him as a player. We always talk about iron sharpening iron. He will not have that opportunity in my opinion, because I think the Carolina Panthers will err on the side of caution. Deontay Johnson being listed as day to day. So something we have to keep our eye on because we know the situation with Deontay Johnson. We know that Deontay Johnson has been the first read in majority of the plays in the playbook that we've seen overall. So at this point, what I'm intrigued to see tomorrow at practice is who will step up as wide receiver number one. We know Adam Thielen was the clear-cut wide receiver number one last year for Bryce Young, going over a 1,000 yards. We know the case with Xavier Lee get with the foot injury, though he had returned officially. Terrace Marshall Jr., a guy on the bubble, Jonathan Mingo, etc. So I want to see who steps up in place of Deontay Johnson because I do think he will be down tomorrow. And again, officially day-to-day -day per Dave Canales. Now, just to jump into practice, kind of an overview like we typically do, and then we'll go to our takeaways, good, bad, and ugly, etc. 
practice overall was definitely a far cry from what we've seen over the past two days of the Carolina Panthers. The pads were also, that definitely played a part in it. We continue to see the defense dominate the offense. We continue to see inconsistency within the offense. That's definitely something that we're gonna touch on a little bit later on in the video. I know a lot of you guys are gonna wanna hear about Bryce Young and just what I've been seeing from him over the past three or four days in totality. We'll make sure to touch on that as well because he did have those two interceptions today. That makes four interceptions over the last three practice periods for quarterback Bryce Young. So again, we'll touch on that a little bit more in detail going forward. The positive out of all of this though, the defense has looked efficient and they looked elite. Now, I don't know if that's just based off of the offense, based on the struggle of Bryce Young, or if that is just how EJ has these guys playing. That is the side of the spectrum that I would like to look at. And I'm hoping that this is one of the better defenses that our offense faces for the duration of this season, because that could be huge for our offense to take that step, as well as for the development of quarterback Bryce Young. But again, from an overview standpoint, defense wins the day yet again. Couple of bad plays here and there from the offense. Definitely had some more individual work in. Full practice today, no more 60 minute practices. So that was definitely good to see. Jumping right into our takeaways for the day, starting at number one. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, Bryce Young and this offense continue to struggle. Now I mentioned last Tuesday how Bryce Young looked the most efficient and effective that I had ever seen him look, as well as the offense. Those two things work hand in hand as we know but that just simply has not been the case over the last three or four days of practice. The defense for the majority of practices has totally dominated the offense. The running game still continues to struggle. Now, today we did see a couple more pop runs for about six or seven yards than we have in the past, but it is still a problem. The offense still continues to struggle. And I will say this to make a note, that offense looks a lot different with Deontay Johnson not on the field. It does. It looks totally different. Deontay Johnson being your wide receiver one, you going out to get him and him doing his job at an efficient, effective level definitely makes this offense look a lot better. They haven't looked the greatest. They haven't looked the best. But today was probably one of the worst days overall that I've seen from the offense. It still does not take the cake from what I saw on Monday, but it's definitely up there for one of their worst performances. Now, I'm not overreacting. I'm not losing my marbles over what I've seen because I know that tomorrow is the true test because then we'll be able to see this offense against a defense that hasn't been studying them in every move that they make during the summer, et cetera. So tomorrow really is the real test, but there is a tad bit of concern. Now, that's not me saying that we should all be panicking. That's not me saying that Bryce Young isn't our franchise quarterback, nothing like that, but I will say it has been a struggle. But again, I'm going to hold off on some of my opinion and drawing some conclusions until I see what I need to see tomorrow against the New York Jets. Off of that, I've mentioned on multiple occasions on this show that I am a defensive guy. I am one of those fans that think that complimentary football is important. So our takeaway number two is defense is going to be a problem. We talk about Dave Canales and him being the quarterback whisperer. I've said on multiple occasions, this playbook looks light years past what we saw with Thomas Brown and Frank Reich last year around this time. We've talked about the rejuvenated wide receiver core and what they've looked like overall, but I will say defense has answered the call. They have. If it's not Jadavion Clowney, it's JC Horn. If it's not him, it's an undrafted safety coming up with two picks. So this defense has pieces. Now, should we be alarmed about what's going on currently in the secondary? Absolutely. If y'all want to see me pull the fire alarm about something, it is that secondary and it is the fact that the lack of depth at that position particularly is going to be an issue for the Carolina Panthers, specifically when we see already early in training camp, Dane Jackson going down with a hamstring injury. And then we all know the history of J.C. Horn and his injuries. It's not something I need to expound on. So that is something that is going to give me cause for pause. But with the exception of that, should the Carolina Panthers go out and add a hypothetical Stephon Gilmore or add more depth overall in that secondary room, this defense is going to be good. And to be honest, this defense is going to be great because they look elite. Once again, I'm holding off 
crowning them as being a top five defense right now, just because we will see what happens when Aaron Rodgers walks into Charlotte tomorrow and participates in joint practice with the Carolina Panthers defense. However, right now, the way I feel about this defense is that it is going to be top tier. For takeaway number three, this is gonna catch a couple of you guys by surprise, but transparently it has caught me by surprise as well. Jacob Hollister is on 53 watch because based on what I've seen from Jacob Hollister since he's come in, as you guys know, we brought him in probably about a week and a half ago. Jacob Hollister has gotten multiple opportunities and every opportunity it seems he gets he makes the plays that need to be made. We could be looking at a situation where some of those tight ends that we talked about earlier in the year could potentially be on bubble watch. It could happen. Obviously, we know Tommy Trimble being tight end number one. He's locked in. We know JT Sanders being our fourth round pick is locked in. But there are question marks when you look at Jordan Matthews and when you look at Ian Thomas. There are question marks definitely there. And right now, Jacob Hollister is making it tough for that coaching staff and that front office to decide what needs to happen when the end of the month comes and it's time to make official roster cuts. As you guys see right here, Jacob Hollister had a beautiful catch from Andy Dalton. Toe drag swag. The official did call it a catch. And this is just one of the many plays that he has made since he started getting those consistent reps with Tommy Trimble and Ian Thomas being out. And then, of course, we know that Tommy Trimble did make his return today officially, but he's gotten his chances and he has made the most of them. So Jacob Hollister is officially on 53 watch, not only for his production on the field, but also based off of his connection to Dave Canales and Dan Morgan from his time in Seattle. So don't be surprised if you see Jacob Hollister make the 53 man roster with the Carolina Panthers, because I will be honest with you, he does make our team better. And kicking news, you guys know I don't discriminate with our kicking news. I took you guys all the way through the kicking battle that Eddie Pinero ultimately won. But today, Eddie Pinero did miss two field goals. And it seems like with Harrison Mevis being gone officially, Eddie Pinero has kind of relaxed. He missed two field goals today. One from 45, one from 55, according to a couple of local beat writers with the Carolina Panthers. So I'm praying to God this is not something that's going to spill over into the season because that really, if y'all want me to be honest, that's going to piss me off. Now for the good, the bad, the ugly, the good for today was the fact that Xavier Lee get as well as Shaq Thompson were live goals during today's practice. We saw Xavier Lee get go down with a foot injury that led the Panthers to list him as day to day. And then Shaq Thompson with that hamstring injury today after practice, he said he was 100% good to go. So that is phenomenal news for the Carolina Panthers, especially with the Jets coming in here for joint practice tomorrow. We will need both of those guys to produce the bad, Bryce Young. Now, this isn't saying that Bryce Young is a bad quarterback or anything like that. And this isn't really necessarily opinion based. It's just based off of what I saw today and what I've seen over the past three or four days of camp. The past three days, I will reemphasize over the past three days, Bryce Young has had four interceptions and three practices. Some of them haven't totally been on Bryce Young. The defenders have made a couple of phenomenal plays. And I know that Dave Canales likes complimenting when Bryce Young takes the when Bryce Young takes those chances, when he takes those shots or whatever the case may be. But I also know that last year with Bryce having 10 interceptions, protecting the football at times was a challenge for him. So I'm hoping that this doesn't carry over to tomorrow or carry over to the season because that is not what I want to see. And I've told you guys, Bryce Young has had a couple of phenomenal days during this training camp. However, my main point throughout the duration of the summer has simply been the inconsistency from him, which then in turn makes the offense look extremely inconsistent as well. So that is the bad for today. Just Bryce Young, the way he's been performing over the past two or three days and the inconsistency with the offense as a whole. And the ugly for me today is going to be the security. Oh my God, tomorrow I will be crashing out. I will be crashing out on you guys' behalf if security is out there and they're on what they've been on the past couple of days. Listen, training camp will officially be over tomorrow. I'm going to make sure I get y'all those videos and I'm going to make sure that y'all see exactly what is going on during camp tomorrow. So make sure to follow us at FPFO underscore podcast on Twitter right now to stay up to date with joint practice tomorrow. Other than that, that's all I have for today. 
Again, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn that bell notification on so you will be notified when we upload our joint practice review and all other Carolina Panthers content. And as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Peace.